In lab 12, understanding computer hardware, we're going to be learning commands that will list hardware for our computer. We're going to execute several commands and examine several files to display our hardware configuration. In order to determine the type of CPU that we're currently using, we need to execute the lscpu command. This is basically list CPU. So if we do, actually I'll clear all of this first and just do lscpu, and it will list the CPU and a bunch of information about it. This is not my CPU since we're using a virtual window right here, but if it were to look at my CPU, it would be something similar to this. In 12.2.2, we're told about the slash proc slash CPU info file, and this will give us more detailed information about our CPU. This is kind of a callback right here where we can use the head command and then the dash n option to list the 20 lines of our CPU info file. So running the head command with our slash proc slash CPU info, we're going to get this, which lists the first 10 lines of our flash proc slash CPU intel, which again gives us more information than just the LS CPU part. These lists or flags can be useful to help troubleshoot or explain some problems of a system. In 12.2.3, we're looking at RAM, and if we do the free command with different options, we are going to be able to get different results. The dash M option after the free rounds everything to the nearest megabyte. The dash G option rounds everything to the nearest gigabyte. So if we do free dash M, we're gonna get these values. And if we do free dash G, we're going to get these values. If we compare them, we can see that they're a little bit different. Everything here is kind of cut down to a thousand because thousand megabytes is one gigabyte. We're also told about swapping. And this is when if we run out of memory or our memory is low, we will have a swap space on our disk and this will temporarily store data to our hard disk. Now we're going to look at buses. To list what devices we have connected to the PCI bus, we need to do the ls for list PCI command and this will list all of these things. And then we're given more information down here about support for specific devices. In our lspci command, we have the slash k option, which shows devices along with the kernel driver and modules used. So if we type in lspci with our dash k, we're going to get all of this info with the type of kernel driver that it uses. If we want to list the USBs that are connected, we will do lsusb. And I guess to this virtual machine, there are no USBs connected. Again, if it were my computer, it would probably show a mouse, a mic, Wi-Fi antenna, keyboard, and a couple other things. For hardware to function correctly on a computer, you usually need drivers for it. To list the drivers that we have, we're going to do lsmod, and this will view all of the currently loaded modules. The first column is the module name. The second column is how much memory is used in the module. And then this third column has a couple of different things, depending on what it is, used by. Sometimes this is incomplete, so it's not too keen to rely on these. In 12.2.8, we're briefly told about BIOS, which is basic input and output of a system. To get to it on a computer, it's usually F2 or F12 or delete. Sometimes it's some weird F keys, but it's usually F2 or F12 or delete. There's also the system management BIOS or SM BIOS. And then we're told about the fdisk command. This is useful for identifying and manipulating disk storage resources on a system. It can be used to create, format, and delete partitions. Partitions are basically portions of a drive that are broken up. So if you have a two terabyte drive, basically there's little portions of that drive broken up into 500 gigabytes, and then another one that's 200 gigabytes, and another one that's 100 gigabytes. So it's basically like a big drive broken up into little smaller parts. The fdisk command can be used interactively and non-interactively. When we use the dash L option with the fdisk, the command will non-interactively list block devices. Without the dash L option, the fdisk enters an interactive mode, and this is used to modify partitions on a disk drive. We're going to execute the fdisk command to list our files, and use the dash L option to list the partition tables for this specific device. If no devices are given, those mentioned in the slash proc slash partitions, if that exists, are used. So in our terminal, I'm going to do fdisk dash L, and this will give us the information of our partition tables, and then as it did right here, it exits. So we have these three different devices. We can see which ones are boot. 
So boot means which drive it's starting from, and that has an asterisk on it. And it has the start and blocks ID and system type. That is it for this lab, pretty short one. There's not a lot of information in this lab. So just like in every lab, there will be notes linked below with more information that's a little bit more in depth, but that's still also really short because it's notes. Also in the description is an entire playlist on Linux Essentials from chapter one to chapter 18, the whole thing.